Hello and welcome to to the final bell. It is great to have you with us, the official Geelong Cats podcast. Uh, I'm joined by a man who I am joined by every single week to talk all things Geelong, to talk about the game that's been and the game that's coming up and to interview a couple of the players. Scotty Gallen, good to see you, Scotty. Good to see you, Cameron, in these fine surrounds I find myself in. We we're going to get you look that in remarkably two well dressed. Seconds, I, I do have the suit on right now. We've got a sponsor for the podcast. Of course, it was only a matter of time. It was big. Thank you to Lake Imaging who've come on board. They've been involved in the podcast over the last couple of years. They're on board as the well, key sponsor of this podcast. It's great to have them. They're the leading diagnostic radiology provider in central and western Victoria. Thank you to Lake Imaging. So any of your imaging needs, oh, go and see go them. Straight to them. We are... Um, <laughs> Where are we, Cameron? Tell <laughs> our wonderful, loyal listeners. As you've alluded to on previous podcasts, I have started a new job. <laughs> Back at my old school, St. Joseph's in Geelong, where a number of quality wow, AFL yeah. products have come mm. from and fine young men have graduated from. Yes. And I've asked if it was okay by you if we do a one off podcast in one of the meeting rooms at St. Joey's. And it's a superb day, the grounds are looking wow. magnificent. And I've even invited back a couple of... Yeah, you found a couple of yes, a couple students of Old St. Joey's boys. Jack Henry and Sam Simpson are going to join us on the podcast. They're going to be coming up shortly. Safety in numbers. The Joey's boys stick together, this Scotty. Very impressive, the aura that you're already... You're running the show. You've taken over a meeting room. We're basically sitting in the staff room. They've had to get out. I had to ask for specific permission to get... Get you in here to let you well, through the gate. I was a bit nervous getting in because a lot of my friends went to this school and I was a bit toey about getting in, but <laughs> I got got through with my head down. So did, I'm you, very did you ever play against any <laughs> of the St. Joey's footy teams? No, no, we were we were country country boys. We didn't bother with these sort of privatey whatever it's you are. Not a private. Oh yeah, school. you're verging on private <laughs> school type setups. Uh, Down in Colac, we were way too ahead of the game. To were you Colac high? Yeah. Doesn't oh. exist anymore. They knocked it down. <laughs> <laughs> they booted you out the door. I was as basic down. as it got, Cameron. It's a miracle I can string two words together. <laughs> oh, well, you do it very well every single week on this podcast, wow. Scotty. It's great to have you here. Maybe at I St. shouldn't Joey's. string too many words together. Well, we're going to talk about that. <laughs> well, let's talk about it now, shall we? As I said, Jack Henry, Sam Simpson coming up. Maybe we don't go into the game in too much detail with them because <laughs> no, it was a win, a thirty-point victory to the Cats. But all those present at the game, and I was sitting there with my eight-year-old and my six-year-old, and I put on a great act to them you saying... You were brave facing it? It was, oh, it's all about the win, how exciting. Deep down, I was thinking, this is not a great game of football. From both teams, North Melbourne, they're in a rebuilding phase. They're struggling a bit this year, missing key players. Luke McDonald, uh, Davies Uniac pulled out before the game. Cameron Zerha wasn't playing. They were below strength. And the Cats struggled to... Knocked them over. It, it look, wasn't pretty, Scotty. I'm a glass half full man all the time. Good, let's do that. So now we're three and two and not playing well. Big tick. Yes. So that is legitimately because your bank wins early. So you know better than me. Your bank wins while you're not going great because you know things are going to turn around. The issue is we are talking about the same thing. When does it turn? The this was bad disposal, inaccurate kicking. It, you saw it at ground level, like there was some options and things happening that is everything we've talked about to keep continuing that yeah, against the, the team that you should have been able to do it against. There were times where I felt that they had opportunities to slice straight through North yeah. Melbourne and chose Corridor. Sa- safer, slower ball use. Tom Hawkins oh, poor old was Tom. ready to tear his beautiful, luscious <laughs> hair out of his head. He was so frustrated. The ball use to him was terrible. He, he had his opponent beaten on countless occasions and the ball either went sailing over his head, straight into the arms of his opponent, landed on top of his head, which allowed the opponent to put a knee right in the middle of his back, or hit the grass. Yeah, It, it wasn't pretty, but it's a win. It's a 30-point win. Move on <laughs> to a block of games... And we're not going to move. We, we will dissect it a bit, but move on to a no, block no, of games I think that that's then. That's how they would have looked at it. Well, exactly the, like that. The next three weeks tells us truly where this team is at. They've got the West Coast Eagles at home, GMHBA Stadium this week, Sydney at the SCG, Richmond at the MCG. 
we get a great indication from it's those three games point. what this team is going to be like. There is one big asterisk Ooh, yes. next to those block of three games, and it's from Sunday's game against the Kangaroos. Patrick Dangerfield yes. came off with what looked like just an ankle injury, a maybe pretty standard. Ankle. Yeah, just cautious. Let's not put him back on. The game was under control. Perhaps more serious than first thought. Well, syndesmosis, which has become osteitis, every suddenly a rolled ankle is not a rolled ankle. Suddenly it's surgery, you're in trouble. Patrick thought he was okay. The doctors thought he was okay. They've, he's gone to Sydney to see a, another specialist because as uh, 24 hours after the game and then by Monday I was like, oh, maybe this is not, this is, could be syndesmosis, which is surgery eight weeks. So my understanding is Patrick's desperate not to because you know how much he hates missing games. Apparently the three-game suspension was the most he's missed in a row his whole career. So he doesn't like not playing. No, but the word you're hearing, and, and we're starting to filter through, is perhaps he'll miss this week. I definitely won't play this week. So, And then they'll see how it's healing. They'll have to make a decision that. on surgery this week. So we'll know more later in the week. But he's hoping not to have surgery. There's differing opinions on whether he should. That's a huge blow oh. if that ends up. Even even if it's not surgery, it's still, I would say, if it's a oh, syndesmosis it's injury that heals under its own. At least two or three court. weeks to heal it on its own. Oh, yeah. I'd say more. Maybe a month. More. Yeah, so. And he's already missed the three. He, he, he found a bit of the footy on the weekend against North Melbourne, but was very scratchy. His touch wasn't there. His kicking mm. wasn't there, like most of his teammates. <laughs> and you could see he needed the run. But then if he's going to miss a, a block yeah, of maybe another three or four, perhaps worst case well, seven or eight, that's a huge blow to it's, No matter chances. what team you are, you know, Dustin Martin doesn't play for Richmond. They struck, you know, th- He's the best player in this team. He's going to potentially be missing for it. So it's another challenge. And, you know, this group, <coughs> you're finding out more. They're playing more youngsters. Sam DeConing had a go. Sam DeConing was very Sam DeConing, good. I like to call him that. <laughs> why, why do we go with DeConing? Have we asked his parents? His parents have told okay, us. Okay, Sam DeConing. He, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he needs a bit of weight room action, but he, he got he near it. He got himself Can't kick, in. but he got oh. near it a lot. <laughs> he did butcher a couple of <laughs> balls. I, and that would have been nerves and his legs feeling like they were a 1,000 kilos yeah, each. I know. But I loved he got himself into position to mark the ball and to con- contest the ball and took one yes. nice strong grab. There's signs there. Now that oh, no, his like best it. is five years. Oh away. yeah, we know that. But there's there's something there. There's something there. You, all I look for with a tall player like that is does he read the flight of the ball well mm. and end up in the right position to contest to the footy and to the mark contest. the ball? Yep. yep. And that was absolutely he liked it. yes. Gets in the right spots. Now he's going to be knocked out of the way by bigger bodies. Oh, he's going to get a bit of a whack and his arms collapse a little bit just because of the weight room work. All of that's going to happen over the next four years. But he was in the right position. That excites me. Yeah, no, that's good. And he was in the right position to get his first goal of <laughs> AFL until Luke Delhouse, who we love, who's had a bit of a drought himself for goals, said, no, 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 big oh, fella. I wonder if Lukey Dow, just that mindset of, oh, I've got to get myself one, didn't oh, realise no it was the first game of standing there. The eyes were lit up, so for old Sammy, you'll have to. What I like, I mean, the cats are blooding the youngsters. They are, and Brandon Parfitt took a big step. I know he's well, no longer a youngster. But back from a week off, he dominated. To being a leader in the midfield, alongside we've seen Cam Guthrie emerge as a genuine no, leader in that midfield. Good, good sign. So there's, there's the, Mitch Duncan found a bit of the footy again, but his ball use wasn't as sharp. He'll be better for another run. Tommy Stewart was oh, magnificent. Outstanding. outstanding. I, I was sitting next to, I had my two boys with me on one side, plus um, my eight-year-old had a mate. North Melbourne supporter. Oh. The banter between eight-year-olds oh, was on opposing living. teams. No, it was as cute as I've oh, ever okay. heard. They had no idea how to stir each other up. <laughs> but on the other side was my dad and my mum. And I just leaned across to dad and I said, gee, I would have loved to have played with Tom Stewart. Oh, he yeah. would have fitted in very nicely. He has that hard, actually. ruthless He's got a bit nature, about your ear, actually. He would have... Oh, he takes the game on too, yes. though. He's sure with everything he does. Fix it well. No, that's a good call. That's Love a very good call. Um, we are skipping one thing too before oh. we go too much into the game. Pre-game. Oh, beautiful. beautiful. We, we flagged it. We got, we got everyone there. We razzed yeah. up the... Four o'clock. Great, 
Great turnout. Harry Taylor had his kids in the car, had James, Isabel and Abby in the car with him and then the great Gaz had little Levi in the car as My well. My mail is. Superb. Levi just is about to go out, thought this is not the best idea. So <laughs> that, if you notice, Gaz was holding his phone. He wasn't for photos. I think he was watching the Wiggles. <laughs> so Levi was... Oh, we've all been there and done that. The things you've got to do, absolutely. Yeah, so Gaz did very well. To, it, it was a beautiful moment. Beautifully done. The songs they played as they went around, it was, one was that Hall of Fame song. Oh, yeah. And, uh, okay. and, it was that, and just as the crowd rose, as they got to each section, for just the standing ovation and the love and support from the crowd. I, I loved it. Again, having my boys there. Yeah. I was like, boys, stand up. Stand up on your seat. You I said, I know see. you didn't watch much of them, but just appreciate mm. how great these people are. Um, it, was, it was fantastic to see. 21,000 twilight against the bottom team on a Sunday that I easily five or 6,000 extra because of what that, I reckon. That game wouldn't have pulled yes. 20,000 no, without agree. those yeah, two legends. Call. Seriously, it yep. wouldn't have happened. No, that's a fair call. It's a, well, the club did well and the fans did really well. Get through the game. Look to next week. Oh, would you review that? You wouldn't. Yeah, you have cr- to. You have to. But don't they get sick? Like... We'll talk to the boys. I can imagine you've played in those games. You know it was rubbish. Do you need to watch all the video? Sometimes as a coach, I reckon you go, that was complete. Yeah, but if you're four and zero going oh, into that okay. game and you're dominating and then you have this blah game against a team that you're you right. should the be. The has been going on for a little while. Yeah, I think they still need to, they need to be reviewing that seriously and saying, okay, where are the opportunities where North Melbourne gave the ball back to them so many times. And they didn't then just go straight through them. So, I, I, so I, okay, just so I make myself really clear. When you turn the ball over really deep in your defence and it's yes. slow and it's an intercept mark or there's a free kick or it's deep, deep in your back pocket, okay, great. Smart, cautious ball yeah, used to work your way down the ground mm-hmm. and there's patience because the opposition's set up, it's deep in your defence. I'm not advocating for crazy kamikaze stuff there that, no. like we used to play from back in that position. But when the opposition gives you the ball back in the mid middle of the ground, between the arcs, that is the just opportunity go. where you just go and rip through them at a million miles an hour and there is nothing more intimidating than worst, that. At worst, you're kicking to Hawk one-on-one. At worst. At worst. And he will destroy if it, anyone he's on at one-on-one. Yeah, I, I don't know why the message isn't getting through. I mean, hopefully, like you said, we're just there's been blokes in and out, maybe a few are rusty. Hopefully the mojo gets back. Speaking of in and outs, maybe oh. a couple of changes? We th- well, I get Jeremy Cameron will play, won't he? Jeremy Cameron's in. The coach declared it, so that's very good. So, Hawk will be very happy. So Jeremy Cameron in, Dangerfield out. Yes, that's what I would be looking it's at. not what we wanted to hear. We wanted to hear Dangerfield no, and Cameron know. playing together, but... I, I think Sam DeCon, he might have, he might have had his taster. Well, well you reckon only one game? Well, Maxi Holmes, the best dog grounded, he got dropped the next week. I think, well, with Cameron back, you probably don't need him getting in the way. I did hear reports out of the VFL. They knocked off North Melbourne. Very impressive in the first half, first three quarters of the game. Darcy Fort dominated the ruck. <sighs> dominated. Well, and um, Asava Radigalia. Very impressive, and oh. even a couple of big fend offs. They were the, the crowd that watched were talking well, about these big fend off where he just took people on and thought, I'm bigger and stronger than you, okay, get out of my well, way. All right, that's done. Sammy King DeConing, DeConing, you're having a rest. <laughs> Asava straight in because this is a structure we want. It's up Reece against Nick Nat, yeah. So you need he's got hops like Nick Nat, you need two, okay. So Fort. Or one of them has to come in for deconing. I oh, now we've got to drop someone else for. You know, by the end of the year, I'm going to teach you it's deconing. No, no, I'm going with what I <laughs> said. Uh, well, then you've got to find someone out like Jordan Clark, who I love. Medical sub, unused. Unused medical sub. Leg speed again. Do I need to keep saying that? That disappoints me. Mark O'Connor's the unknown. Does he come straight back in? Where was out the shark? An, he was out with an injury concern. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what it oh, was. Shark's going to play on Tim Kelly. Yeah, I want I want him on TK. Well, then we're back in the mix of who has a rest. I mean, Ben Jarvis and Josh Jenkins both kicking four goals oh in the no, VFL, but with no. Jeremy Cameron coming back, no, but neither of them. They need to rest. Hey, another one for you though, for listeners. Oscar Brownless played his best oh, game good. for the club. 
coming back. I really from, want him to get a crack at it. Yeah, had a shoulder injury really late in preseason, so it was just set back a little bit. Best game from the club for the club. Okay, now we we have issues, listeners, finding one more to go out because. So yep. you want Jordan Clark in, and you? Oh want well, Mark, no, I don't Mark know whether O'Connor. I can get Jordan Clark in. To be honest, I I think he should be in. But if you're getting Shark back, Cameron in, lose and. And Asavas or Fort, whichever one, one of them. You need two Ruckman against Nick Nat. Proper Ruckman. Okay. So that's three changes. Dangerfield, okay. Sam DeConing, DeConing, and one other. It might depend on whether the little whispers uh, oh. about the West Coast forward line. Might, I'll, well, I'll maybe Calder's not line. required. You know, Jack Henry and Cole have been doing a bit of swapsies. Well, Jack better be required. Well, We're talking him. to him in a second. I He's about to walk through I that know, door. I, I just... <laughs> Whistled that out before he was there. But he's the swing man who, of course, should be in that team, and he will be. But if there's Alan, Kennedy, and Darling, but we think maybe Kennedy, you know, too old to make the trip all the way down to Geelong, which would be very good for us. I think one of the tall defenders might have to make way. Okay. Watch this space. But we've definitely got Cameron in, Danger out. We've yes. got Savile Fort in. And Perhaps shark injury with Coning out, which would be unlucky, but he's out of taste. No, he's out of taste. That's what we're all at. Mark the shark definitely comes back if he he's He comes available. in and tags. No, I Someone think. Someone misses. I like what they're doing. They're giving kids a taste. Well, they're your not... point, and now I'm thinking about it, is well made. Jack Henry no longer plays forward. We'll ask him about the fact he's played the swingman role a little yeah. bit, but he's no longer forward if Jeremy Cameron's there with Hawkins and Gary Rowan's back. I don't think you can... I think you only have two out of Henderson, Collajasny, Henry. Yeah, absolutely. And I like... I definitely like Henry. Henry's number one out of those two. So I'd probably say you only have one out of Henderson well, or Collajasny. Hendo at his age, and every, like he's not going to play every game. You've no, got to true. start thinking about things like that. True. So, you know, there might be some managed coming in. It'll be interesting. Again, selection dilemmas. Selection dilemmas. We like it. We better take a break because Jack Henry and Sam Simpson, both good St. Joey's boys. Have like uh, food or any drinks <laughs> from uh, people to look after me? Guest of honour at this place? They're about to walk through the door. They'll bring a coffee. Oh, they will. They're sure. good men. They're, they're good boys. Before we do take a break, we do know that feathers will fly when the West Coast Eagles land in Geelong this weekend <laughs> to face the Cats at GMHBA Stadium. Did you Stadium. write this? Did you like that one, Scotland? <laughs> Get your dose of Saturday afternoon footy at the Cattery as our boys look to make it two on the trot with tickets starting at just $30 for adults and $5 for kids. Reserve seat holders and social club members can redeem a ticket free via Ticketmaster. Plus, get to the ground early and watch the future in action as the VFL boys take on an AFL Under-18 Academy team from 10 a.m. See you at the footy. Go Cats. Let's take a break. Jack and Sam coming up next. For all your new season Cats gear, hats, hoodies, you name it. Get down to the Cats shop at GMHBA Stadium today or visit thecatshoponline.com.au. The Cats shop is your one-stop shop for everything you need to support the greatest team of all. Go Cats! Hello and welcome back. It's great to have you with us on To The Final Bell. We are brought to you by Lake Imaging, the leading diagnostic radiology provider in central and western Victoria. And as promised, we've got a couple of special guests here, Scotty. Right. We've already spoken about the fact you've made the huge <laughs> trek to my old school, St. Know, Joey's. And you've Say a whinged. prayer at the door when I came in. Uh, I'm surprised you even made it through the gates, Scotty. Uh, but two guys who know this place very, very I well. St. Joey's old boys. The class of 2016, but also doing some wonderful things with the cats. Jack Henry and Sam Simpson is with us. Hello, boys. Hello, guys. Thanks for having us. Great to have you both here. Sammy, I'm going to get to you in just a second because uh, all the listeners to this podcast just want to know when is Sam Simpson back, and we might have some good news there. Jack, just quickly, pulled up okay. Everything good from Sunday yep. Twilight game against the Kangas? Yep, feel pretty good, Lingy. is um. Yeah, just one of them ones you get through and feeling pretty fine. So, yeah, get through this week of training and I'll be right for next week. Are you a forward, a back or a ruckman <laughs> at the moment? <laughs> at the moment, oh, I've got no idea. <laughs> been, been, every, been everywhere, so, but no, nah, I think hopefully start to settle a bit more in the back line. Nice and settled back here in your old school. Oh. Were you a good 
good boy? Yeah, I was a good boy. Uh, hang, was, on, um, hang on, hang on. <laughs> so you two, same year level, same footy team. I think I asked you off air. You wouldn't have lost many games. You won the whole thing. Herald Sun Shield? Yeah, we did in our year 12 year. Um, Sammy, I don't think, played that game. So we, oh. had, we had a pretty strong... Oh, yeah, it was Pretty strong drop that game as well. Were yeah. you were you were you dropped or were you injured <laughs> yeah. for that game, Sammy? <laughs> or misbehaving detention? Yeah, I don't think they needed me in the yeah, end. Saturday so. detention, he couldn't uh, couldn't come. <laughs> so it was a, I mean, that's pretty. I mean, in the junior ranks, you know, Herald Sun Shield's a big deal. That would have been massive, I gather. Yeah, it was huge. Who'd Playing you, on the MCG. Who'd you beat? Uh, uh, St. Pat's. It's always St. Nice. Pat's. It's always St. Pat's Ballarat, isn't it? Yeah, they're there every. Is year, there any other school that ends up w- in the grand final? No. Nah. <laughs> MCG. Uh, Precursor to another game? Yeah, I think... Who was it? it was, uh, West Coast and Collingwood, I oh, think it was. That's yeah, awesome. Was, How good's yeah. that? We didn't win it in my day. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> who was in your year level? Uh, no, 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 no one other really... Cor- so, Jimmy Bartel, Nick Maxwell were th- three years below. So they and Matty Scarlett was two years above. So, so we you were a dud, dud year. Uh, we were solid. <laughs> we were solid. We might have. I think we went down to. What St. was St. it Bernard's. like, That's boys, teams, yeah. Uh, yeah. coming to this school in the legend of Cameron? Oh, I mean, what he talked about now that he runs it again. What, what's oh, what was it like? Met him in the reception. He, there was a fair bit of fair bit of aura about him in there. Like it was people <laughs> bringing him things and making sure he was all right. So, yeah, no. and his reputation as a student before you got, was he sort of put up as the one to follow? I haven't heard too many stories. Oh. Oh, well, Actually, have we? No, uh, a good leadership, I think. Uh, yeah, that from memory. I think that's the one they. So uh, they're programmed. You've got them all. Thank you, boys. Out. Thank you very much. I'm going to okay. get Scotty away from this nonsense. He <laughs> wants to tease me no, the whole time. Asking facts. <laughs> <laughs> Sammy, when are we going to see you? This week, finally. Oh, yeah, so fantastic! Very keen to get my first hit out out of the way. Um, yeah, we've actually got a practice match against the AOS Academy in the VFL. So. Yeah, have a run around there and hopefully find some form. I've got to put my hand up here, Cameron. Yes. The grand fi- I forgot your injury in the grand final, Sam. Uh, yeah, actually, can Remember we just on can air? We, can we I rewind? Forgot. So we were doing the podcast <laughs> three, four weeks ago. The first one, I think. Uh, yeah, and, and we were putting together our best 22, and I said, well, Sam Simpson's in it, assuming he's okay and recovered, and I'm not sure... Scotty's like, well, what do you mean? What's he? What's he got to no, recover from? I think from? we were adding it. Who I was? was <laughs> I was like, who was the, in the grand final team or something? Yeah. Would you like to see one of the most uh, horrific looking injuries going around? Sorry, it, mate. I, it I, was scary though, wasn't <laughs> it? I mean, yeah. Take us through yeah. the, yeah, the don't incident. Re- I don't remember it either. So yeah. it's all good. See? Um, yeah. No, I can. I can remember maybe up to the th- oh, fourth quarter, just before it happened. Um, but yeah, I was. I was pretty out of it after that, and. Um, basically woke up when the siren went just in the rooms and um, in the hands of the docks. And did you say, did we win? Or? Uh, yeah, well, there was a TV <laughs> on in there and I yeah, found out pretty quickly that uh, yeah, that it wasn't a great result. But And it was the head, number one, was their yeah. biggest concern, head and neck. But then the shoulder as well. So yeah, that a shoulder reconstruction over the summer? Yeah, funnily enough, I sort of, I didn't realise for about a week um, so yeah, I was just worried about the head, and it actually it actually pulled up really well. Um, you know, in in a couple of days, I was pretty clear again. So um, yeah, but then yeah, we had our off season, and uh, yeah, my shoulder just kept sort of slipping out on me, um, just sitting around doing not much, and I was like, oh, that's probably not <laughs> right. Like it's not great. Got to get a cover. Co- oh, so on. yeah, checked in with the docs, and they had a feel, and were like, yeah, that that's a uh, that's a scan, and. And then basically I was straight home for surgery and uh, had a Rico back in Melbourne. And coming into this season and, and other couple of little injury concerns that you're coming back from, but good news you're playing this week, it frustrated. I mean, you had such a wonderful year last year. You took that big leap to becoming such an, an important player of the best 22. Has there been any frustration or is it something that, no, that's fine, I'll get this right and I can still have a huge impact? Yeah, definitely. Um, especially because you know it's a, lo- a long term injury, um, but you know you use that as a bit of fuel to um, in your rehab to to train hard and and try and get that back um, get back on the field quicker. Really, it's just been that bit of motivation and yeah, a bit of fire in the belly. But yeah, and finally looking forward to this weekend and hopefully it all goes well. Now, Jack, we um, Lingy had a crack about the swingman, but. Take us through how it's happened. You train as a defender, I gather, all year? 
I mean, all pre-season. Yeah, yeah, I have. Um, and the tap came at half time of Hawthorne. Yeah. Turned, As a kid, turned the game. Oh, yeah, we're going to get to the good <laughs> bits. You'd played Ford before, but was, do you get the shock or do you, Scalo says, go over to that group, we don't want you anymore, or how does it work? Um, don't, not necessarily. Hopefully he doesn't <laughs> say he doesn't want me anymore, but um, no, yeah, just at half time, he just, I think they just wanted another taller option because uh, Big Hawk has it pretty hard when there's a few big guys trying to jump into him. So yeah, I just pretty much just got told just to make sure Frost doesn't keep running and jumping at it and just play a bit of footy. I, I don't know they don't they don't try and overcoach me because <laughs> I don't know. I just they just let me do my thing a little bit. And, do you, and the assumption now, all of our listeners would make it with where we're assuming Jeremy Cameron gets a, his first yeah, no, run. He's in. He's in. He's in. It's locked. <laughs> Coach has declared. It's done. It. Okay. Good. Good. He's I'm, in. I'm glad you're all over it. Yeah. Perhaps not required down there. This week, so just slot. Have thought so. <laughs> <laughs> I think he can have he can have the uh, half forward roll back. I think slot straight back into the backline role. Yeah, I, I wasn't really forward at all last week with yep. big Sammy DeConning in there. Um, but yeah, I just had to help out in the ruck a little bit and let Blitz settle in the back line. So Sam what, showed plenty. Yeah, I mean he didn't have his kicking boots on. I, yeah. I must admit, he wasn't but, the only one. No, that's right. But took the grabs, looked comfortable, and he's only going to fill yeah. out more. Um, it must be exciting seeing a big, young, raw player like that and think, yeah, this kid could yeah. be something. Yeah, Sammy was great. He um, Even just getting to contest and making a contest, which is probably why he was in the side first and foremost, and um, just helps our smalls get to work and, and probably something we lacked in previous weeks. So, yeah, it was great having him in and he looked, he looked comfortable. What about the goal of the year? We've got to talk about that. You created the whole thing and kept running. And it... Obviously, sometimes I gather you don't think too much about things because it'll unravel. Was that all instinct and in hockey and you're all running and Jordan's yeah. there? What was that like? Um, yeah, it's, it's 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 a blur really. <laughs> when it happens, it's it is very instinctive. So you um, thought you should give it to him because he's right there. Oh yeah, like, so I give it to <laughs> give it to Clarky every day. He's one of the fastest guys on the list. So um, yeah, I just just got it and tried. I've been working on personally trying to use my feet a bit more and, and get out of those sort of pressure situations. So, yeah, it, it was nice to be able to um, do that for myself and, and for the team. But, yeah, I've just – and then the support from Hawk and, and Jordan. Did you think about great. kicking it yourself when you got that hammer? <laughs> I think – oh, because you don't get many chances up <laughs> forward. So, I think, oh, I could cash in one more. But, no, nah, if I missed that, I would have um, wouldn't right. have come back, I don't think. Play you can, the year so far, you can so. see that you now have that belief and confidence and have done for a couple of years on the field. Sammy, I reckon last year, sitting back as a supporter, and it was all from the um, comfort of our living room, not being able to be there. But we could see that with you last year. That Was there a point in last season where you realised, oh, hang on, I'm, I'm not just some kid who's just um, snuck into the team and you know running around just trying to get the odd kick here and there, but I'm, I'm actually influencing games and, and contributing in a massive way to this team. And was there a comfort level of I'm part of this now? Uh, yeah, definitely. It's a good question because I suppose prior to last year, like all you're working towards is trying to get an opportunity. So um, once that came, you know, you definitely just want to take it with both hands. And um, I think, you know, now we're going into our fifth year and you sort of get to that level where you're, you know, you're like, right, I really want to contribute to the team. or not just a, a young guy coming in that, you know, is the 22nd person in. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was nice to, to have a good role in there in that high forward and, and try and just make an impact around some stoppages and, and stuff like that. Certainly did that. Created a lot of things. I'm just, I'm just ticking off the days until we can get him back in there. We're just yeah. one, one week and straight oh. back in. Are we... Can we, can we He's manage on the that? one week routine. Nice. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> I noticed Jeremy Cameron was the uh, no weeks and straight oh, back no, in. I know, you don't bother with yeah. that stuff. <laughs> Just looking back, I mean, the hub, I mean, it probably feels a bit surreal now looking back. I mean, last year feels a bit weird for everyone, but the fact, you know, you got through it and now you're on the other side, what was it really like? I didn't mind it. <laughs> it was on the same. Yeah, were you both, <laughs> were you both <laughs> a thrive and enjoy it, not a hate it? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, you kind yeah. of had to make the most of it. Like you had to put things into perspective. Like we um, got to keep playing footy. That was probably the best part. And um, oh, I mean, for us, we got to spend time with all our mates. We're pretty young still. We um, like spending a lot of time together. I mean, it's easier for us because we don't have our own families. But um, 
yeah, the sunshine was nice up there and um yeah. I think, yeah, just mainly though, just playing footy and, and enjoying our time. Was that the big downer of the whole thing when all those families arrived and all those <laughs> kids just <laughs> running around annoying the hell out of you? Little George Dangerfield running a mark and all that? Just yeah, uh, little George. No, he was good. <laughs> I, I liked hanging out with him, actually. It was it actually wasn't too bad. It was pretty refreshing um, having some new faces come into the hub and um, it was nice to see, you know, all the dads and stuff a bit more sprightly again. So, um, yeah, it was good. No, no one is spilling the beans on who the most annoying kids wow, were. Wow, we can have a we can get a top three. <laughs> um, <laughs> grind Myers, how did Grind handle? Geyser. Oh, yeah. kids! You, know, I was talking about teammates. Oh, no, teammates. Oh, oh, you want <laughs> kids? Oh dear, I'm not getting involved in that. Me Which either. of the teammates really lifted themselves during the hub? Given you spending twenty four seven. Lifted. Uh, Charlie Constable. He, he, Chuka, your Chuka, man. He's um. He was funny. He's. Yeah, he's good fun to be around, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Lukey Dalhouse, he was good, wasn't oh, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was floating about. Sounds like the same people. Everyone's oh. fairly unanimous on the names. Yeah, Chooker's, a common Chooker. thing Chooker's my man I'm trying to get in the team every chance I can get. But uh, <laughs> is he just a pest off the field? <laughs> yeah, a bit. He's, <laughs> I, Jack lives with I'm him. Living so oh, oh, wow. I just, yeah, I'm living with him at the moment. He's a, he's a massive pest. <laughs> oh. Yeah, but spending day in, day out with him, it can uh, start wearing thin. <laughs> Charlie? No, nah, we love Charlie, though. Good. I, I keep trying to get him a game. Scotty's always fighting against no, him. No, no. Doesn't want him in there. Oh, that's, that's incorrect. <laughs> now, what about the Cats? I mean, overall, it's been a so-so start. You know, you've taken a while to get... What's it like as a player? Because you're clearly not playing the way you want to play, but is that personnel and rustiness? Um... Yeah, I mean, you're I, flying, I, but I'm I talking could, about all the other blacks oh, who aren't doing their job. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> hard to sort of pinpoint what's um, going wrong. I don't think it's been catastrophic. I mean, we obviously no. haven't been playing out of our skin and and, um, and up to the standard we want to be playing, but um, we're still getting a couple of wins. Right. And, and, and we'll, I think we're moving in the right direction. Like We're making progress on sort of the t- a lot of the things we want to do um, and execute, so... Uh, I think, yeah, I'm still very confident in how we're going to shape up this year and, and hopefully start really finding our form uh, towards middle and end of the year. Let's hope so. The fans are uh, out there. They're cheering you on as always. Huge game this weekend. You're playing the VFL versus the uh, Under-18 Academy guys. <laughs> Jack, it, on Saturday afternoon. Uh, so that, Sorry, that game's 10 a.m. on Saturday. Yeah, nice early start. Yeah, yeah. That's due kicking. That's Good. Yeah. real old school. Good luck with that. Um, so that'll be the curtain raise, and then there'll be a bit of an Anzac Day ceremony before the um, before the main game. But one forty five um, at the Cattery GMHBA well, yeah. Stadium. It's it's still a big test. I know home home deck helps, but the West Coast Eagles at their best when you see Kennedy and Allen and Darling playing up forward and Nick Nat. Um, yep. Tim Kelly, who hopefully yep. won't have too good a game against his old team yep. through the middle of the ground, they are going to be a big test, aren't they? Yeah, always. Um, they're always a tough, tough ass, the, the West Coast Eagles. But uh, I don't think it's a bad thing for us. I mean, you can't just. I mean, and then again, it's like most teams you play, they can if they show up, like they can be really good and hard to beat. But yeah, it's um, it'll be good. Good test to see where we're at and, and um, see how we're shaping up against some of the better teams in the comp. Did I hear a whisper that one of those key forwards might not play oh. for the Eagles? Which one? The oldest one? I think the oldest one. I did hear a whisper. It's a long way there. for a 35-year-old <laughs> I would hope he who, doesn't. Who, but would, Oscar who If all three play, would you get one in particular or do you just, as a group, um, handle them? Fairly, fairly uh, group dynamic down there. But um, usually uh, Blitz, he'll take... The big one and Hendo as well. He'll probably take another big one, and then Collar and I and and whoever else can sort of uh, shift through the other guys. But yeah, it's never really. Um, all right, you got him the whole day. You you just beat him. It's more we like to help each other. So is uh, Mark the Shark back? Mark shark, O'Connor. Um, I'm not too sure what the Shark's doing. But wouldn't mind sending him to Tim Kelly. Just <laughs> make sure oh, Tim Kelly has a nice quiet yeah, yeah. game. He's been good in the middle, hasn't he? He yeah. can tag for another week. Been right. excellent. Um, we better leave. Let you two guys go. Just um, what's on for the rest of the day? Is this a lay day? Uh, I've got a bit of uni to catch up on. Oh, so hang I'll, on. Um, I'll be. Uh, this education got you to uni I in this wonderful yeah, establishment. I should have come in here, used some of my teachers, but what I'll are you studying? 
Uh, film and television, actually. Oh, hang on. A bit different. Making movies, Cameron. Yes. Yep. Taking my you journey. You made many movies over your journey. <laughs> that, that sounds interesting. What uni? Uh, it's a Deacon. Oh, cool. It's Burwood, though, so I've got to do it online. Oh, it's Burwood. Sammy, what are you off of today? Yeah, a bit of study as well. <sighs> I'm just doing a what are you doing, Sammy? diploma of business, so... Yeah, this is that very, off, get the work these, done. Look at these, what they produce at this these school. These are the bright students yeah. that we produce. I thought it was footballers and that's enough. <laughs> no, a, it's a good balance, lifestyle balance of great education, great sport. You, did Gotta you go to university, Cameron? I went to university. No, you didn't. I never, I never, <laughs> <laughs> I never obtained my university <laughs> degree. Did you set foot in? I had five years, part-time. Five years? Part-time doing primary school teaching. <laughs> and I didn't do my rounds though, so I never actually got my... <laughs> Graduation. Five years of wasted. It was a double degree, primary teaching in arts. Art? Well, not as in art. <laughs> I, uh, my major was history. Well, there you go. We've learned something. Well, Cameron's history. a primary school teacher. No, I'm <laughs> definitely not. I wouldn't have the patience for that. Um, you can borrow one of the classrooms if you want. Grab some of those teachers, to. do a bit of extra oh, tutoring so you, for you. You've got to lay of the land <laughs> now, haven't you? <laughs> Jack, Sammy, um, thank you both for, for coming and having a chat. Good luck this week against the Eagles. Mm. Good luck for your comeback game in the VFL. Sammy, hopefully it's only the one and straight back in. That's what I'm pushing for. I love seeing you in the team. Um, thanks for your time. Thanks, Good on you, boys. Appreciate thanks it. for having us. For all your new season cats gear, hats, hoodies, you name it. Get down to the Cats Shop at GMHBA Stadium today or visit thecatshoponline.com.au. The Cats Shop is your one-stop shop for everything you need to support the greatest team of all. Go Cats! Welcome back. It is great to have you with us to the final bell brought to you by Lake Imaging, the leading diagnostic radiology provider in central and western Victoria. We are in the meeting room of some Joey's. We and are. And a couple of our wonderful alumni have good. just left. They're good kids. As I walked them out, I took oh. them to the office of, of course you did. Lynchy, Chris Lynch, who is the Lynchy. coach. Of oh well, was you know the Herald Sun Shield team that he's talking? Oh, about. he coached them. To he victory. coached them to victory. Um, he wanted to know why his name wasn't <laughs> mentioned. That's a good point. Um, so, good work, Lynchy. Yes, yes. Is he still holding the role as football uh, coach? I think oh. it's I think it's a shared role now oh. amongst a couple. And They're trying to negotiate you. Oh, you work for a raw? Actually, what's happened there, Cameron? No, I don't. Have anymore. you revealed your former workings with a rival? I briefly was involved in the um, football program at Geelong Grammar. A completely different competition. Briefly, you got your children in there for free school <laughs> schooling. No, I did. Well, that's the only reason you do any work for those sort of establishments. Uh, so, have you ceased that? Uh, I have, I have relationship? ceased that. Yes. Is that yep. part of your employment? Uh, no, I was ceasing that anyway. <laughs> Uh, Anna, I'm, oh, I'm so happy I've invited Scotty <laughs> into my old school. Oh, just I'm for loving me to it copy. here, actually. I'm starting to really... I might walk the corridors after this. Just I'll, I'll introduce five. you to a few of my former teachers. I'll have <laughs> glowing things to say about me, Scott. Oh, you, you've got them all bluffed, but I love how you've done it. But how good are those two? Sam Simpson, yep. we talk about kicking the ball properly, making decisions. He is everything this team needs. And creates. Yes. And... He's prepared to make decisions quickly on the move. Like, he'll just go. But like he said, it's our fifth year. Now we get it. Yeah. Like that's yeah. like you played with everyone. It's, it's fifth year. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I can now influence. I don't just have to get a game. And, he, and his point he made, and it's, it's a really good one, and it's okay to acknowledge this. We expect first, second, third year players oh. to just be thinking about everything and influencing team and leadership yeah. and everything. In those first few years... You were just thinking, oh. how can I get a game? You're learning how to train. Yep. You just want to get a game. You're learning how to deal with the fans. You're, and light, you're running around. Nightlife. Like you've got a lot on your plate. And honestly, you are out on the field. You're just thinking, how can I get my next kick? Yeah. Because that, if I get enough of those, that'll keep me in the team. Yeah. Or I can't run here because he'll be upset. Yeah. It's yeah. There's all that sort of Before fifth year. Fifth like, year is where you start just broadening your outlook yeah. and thinking, okay, I'm comfortable with what I can exactly. do as far as I'm not going to lose my spot. But I can now look at how do I help that teammate, that teammate structurally, what are we trying no. to do? I love the way they talk, those boys. Time to get to your questions now. We do appreciate you sending them in. Lots of questions coming in over the last few weeks. I promise we are trying to get to as many of them as we possibly can. Uh, Kreben 
11.37 sends in, what are your favourite Gary and Harry stories oh. after the wonderful lap on Sunday evening? I'll go with the public ones. <laughs> Harry's ham down the sock that he still to this day has never. Bizarre. He handed it to Tom Lynch uh, after a game in Adelaide. To, to give to Josh Jenkins? Was it? Maybe no, to, to, to Josh Jenkins. No, maybe it was to Josh Jenkins because yes. he's been sick in the yep. lap. That's still – and Harry – What's your Harry? You'd have a Harry story oh, of some weirdness where, that's next level. Where do I start with Harold? Um, he, well, I, I want to tell a serious one. I knew you'd you be don't, boring. <laughs> what about how good a bloke he is? No, I, I used to, I, I've got these memories of the, how hard he used to push himself in the gym doing the, he looks like quite skinny yeah, legs and all that. Yeah. The squats and deadlifts and all those strength weights oh, for really? your lower half that he was doing, the, the numbers that he was lifting were off the charts in those early days. But he would push himself to the point where he's always had that awkward walk. He looks like he's yes, 100 years yes. old. He would walk out of the gym, barely able to move, would almost have to crawl out of the gym and would need help walking out the door. He had pushed his body to the last wow. Yeah, millimetre of effort. Me. It's a good story. Uh, just a machine, that man. And Gary's stories. Well, where got, do I start there? Well, no, I'll give you two. I I did this first ever story on him. I went to, you know, where they train with Mickey Turner. Uh, the Falcons footy ground, yeah. yes. And reserve. Mickey got me an interview. Like, obviously, they protected and he didn't do any interviews. And I went and watched him play at Coburg and he was just just a little kid. It was like, oh, he's got something. Anyway, he, spit, he said one word. That's fine. And my other great story is I was fortunate to be in an establishment with you post-2007 grand final. Don't know what you're talking about, Scott, but yes. The victory, and <laughs> you were overexcited. Gazook turned up with, I think it was about 50 cheeseburgers. I went, that's, you probably don't remember that. I thought, that is quality. Handing them out, every, cheeseburgers for everyone. The, Gaz, on the field, obviously. Gaz on the field could do anything. Off yeah. the field, competitive as all. Well. And, and off the field, one of the nicest, most oh, genuine. Always said hello. Like gentlemen. media, they're yeah. the last people you like. Always, hello, Scott, how are you? Like that sort of stuff I just he, he was also brilliant value on a footy trip. Really? Not, not in, I'm not talking in a, you know, silly would carry on, do stupid things and trying to be the life of the party, but was always there with you, laughing, having fun, little games, beach soccer during the day yeah, while yeah. we're all in probably a little bit recovery mode. Um, would, would do so things people like... People wouldn't picture that. Yeah, that's do things like bring the cheeseburgers. I'm, I mean, that's not a surprise because he, no. he'd get involved in everything. He'd just love being around the boys and brilliant value on a yeah. footy trip. Oh, that's good. Underrated footy trip performer. On the give us his best game. You played with oh, him for no, two hundred. Impossible, on. impossible to say best game. The when, so when I did for, he win the Brownlow? Uh, two thousand and nine. Ten. He had a year off the charts, didn't he? And then he left in eleven. Left. He yeah, 11. left end of ten. Um, and then I think two thousand and. Was it 12 or 4, 13 or 14? Oh, yeah. He won the Brown. I saw Gold him have 55 for Gold Coast one day, like live. It was ridiculous. I, I was going back, I was reminiscing because I was working for Channel 7 on the Geelong Hawthorne Easter Monday game. And as part of it, we were reminiscing about previous Geelong Hawthorne classic games. Those That run from you know 09 through to yeah, Hawkins' yeah. 2012 goal and all that. And I went back just to, to the stats to. <laughs> Just, just to match games with my memories because yeah. they blur a little bit. Was that one in 09 or was that one in 11 and, and all of that? And then I started reading Gaz's stat lines <laughs> in those games. I'm like, oh, so Gaz had 35 and kicked four in that game <laughs> and we won it by nine points. Yeah, maybe we don't win that without him. Oh, that one he had 33 and kicked three. Yeah, yeah it's... I'd almost forgotten some of his most unbelievable games uh. in... Remember how high pressured those Geelong Hawthorne games were, and he's Gaz just yeah, it's, it's torching a good them. Well done, unbelievable. Uh, Tommy Faz asks, "How big will Jez's impact be?" Jeremy Cameron, we've we've talking oh, earlier. He's back in this week. Well, what's the impact? Is he further up the ground and Hawk deeper, or will no, they alternate? I think he's the over the back man. He likes playing that way, Cameron. And I think yeah, I think he'll be deeper than Tom. Oh, look, Tom Hawk will sleep better. That's one thing, and. I think he'll slip in very quickly. Physically, touch wood, it holds up. I think he'll kick minimal four on debut for the Cats. There you go. Cats fans love the sound of that. The other thing he will, his opponent will never come off. 
to no. help with Hawk, and Hawk's Absolutely opponent not. will never come off to help with Cameron. It will be the others that the, have to make sure they're smart about it and all that, but you I know that they have to lock on. Instantly inject that forward line into goodness. Mick, I'm going to go with Mick Ad Mick. Oh, Mick Ad <laughs> MC, AD, MC, Mick Ad Mick. Yeah, Mick Ad Mick. Okay. Uh, Do we make these up? Or uh, not? These are all these are all <laughs> off the uh, social media. Oh, okay. Scotty, because we're all uh, au fait with uh, we technology. Are. Who will be our next captain? Oh, That oh. is a great question Ooh, because that's... when the legend eventually retires, it will be big Ooh. shoes to fill. And he won't be one of these hand it down before no, I retire no, 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 types. No, no, no. I just want to clear that up. That's become a bit of a trend. No. That's not happening. He's captain for Until he says, yep. I'm done. Uh, Tom, or, Tom Stewart, Mark Blitzarves. Not, not putting them in any order. I think that they're both be. vice captains, aren't they? So uh, Patrick Dangerfield's a vice captain, but he's I think Paddy and Blitz are the vice captains. Tom Stewart's been in the leadership group now for a number of years. Yeah, I, there's not an overwhelming surge of uh, yeah. No, I I agree. Any of those two. This one's a different one from Declan Kelly. What is the best tackle you've ever seen? Oh, uh, Geelong tackle or oh Joel Corey that night in that preliminary was it preliminary a preliminary final. Oh, it wasn't a smother. The greatest smother in history. Okay. Off, uh, was a big Chris Bryan as he wound Jesus up in his nervous. left boot. He was going to slot it. Very key moment in your oh. history of the club. Diving smother. Geelong fans, you know what we're talking about, but those who was don't. Was it a prelim? Prelim final, one we won by five points, 2007. That was unbelievable. Joel Corey, diving smother of oh, desperation. Oh, the tackle. But, but also took possession of it Correct. off the boot. Why didn't? Otto's tackle in the grand final. Ah, Completely yes. Completely set the tone. Chased that, down Pettigrew. That just said, wow, we. And f- that was early in that game. Can I, I agree with you? And I'm just going to up it just by one. Yeah. It's talking about setting the tone. The first tackle Max Rook laid oh, on Raf yes. Clark to open the 09 yes. grand final. He nearly killed him. Yes. Yeah, good call. And, and I have listened to it back with Robert Walls' commentary. <laughs> and it is just... Brutal. Raf Clark just ambled off the mark. You don't have that much time in a grand final. And Max Rook yeah, no, ate him cool. alive. Set the tone, absolutely. Brilliant. Uh, Kynan Fuller asks, who is the toughest player you've played on? Kynan, I, I find Ooh. that so hard to it's, answer. Give me two. Tough as in dirty and tough as oh, in tough. Okay. Oh. You played against Voss, didn't you? Yeah. Voss, Voss was the most physically intimidating midfielder. Because you were young all. then and he yeah. was the right at the peak of it. They used to beat up in you blokes. But tough too. He one of his teammates, Simon Black. Yeah. He was in first hands and just this silky mover and everyone thinks, well, he was just this beautiful mover, you know, not that tough. I would be all over him. I would Strong. He would be in packs. We'd have Selwood and Bartel and these players meeting him from the other direction, smashing the living daylights out of him. More often than not, he still won it. And then the very next one, he'd get up and go again. Yeah. Like that, yeah it was a toughness that was – he didn't mm. dish out the hits like Voss did, who could you know, yeah, destroy hurt, blokes. Yeah, would like doing it. But Black never flinched, yeah. not once. No, that's um, a good good, good answer. Solid player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful player. Uh, Jay Sakita asks, what do we do about Tim Kelly? Go a hard tag with the shark if good to go. Jay Sakita, I think yeah, hopefully we've answered that. We we'd do. say yes. We're all for shark NATO being a tagger, and obviously no Shuey, just stop Kelly. Tina Robertson asks, "Who is the funniest team to play against?" I don't know what you mean by funniest. Um, well, your era, you blokes, Mackie and Co, were very good on the lip, so I, you brought a lot of humour. Do you know who I found really humorous? And I only had one season against him. That's why I've always liked his career going forward. Stephen May from Melbourne. Oh yeah. When he first started with the Gold Coast Suns, we played a game against them. Um, maybe ran five or six up there, and I just was resting forward for. Five minutes. The kick came in. Me and him one on one. Now he's eighteen, and hadn't isn't built like the man yeah. he is now. And I've just outbodied Mark, yeah. gone back, kick it to a teammate um, that we get a goal. The runner comes straight out to him, <laughs> and's just giving it to him about being more competitive yeah. against me in the marking contest. And he just so calmly said, "Well, he's thirty years old and had twelve pre seasons. I'm in my first year of football." <laughs> 
is it really fair to match us physically like this? He's having this conversation. Yeah, to the runner. <laughs> and the runner's like just trotted off. And he, gets, he turned to me and he said, do you think that's a fair point to make? <laughs> oh. I was like. I love Stephen Maine. Yeah, that that's, yeah, that's quality. I reckon, I, he was, that. I reckon he was 78 kilos and uh, <laughs> he's turned into a wonderful player. So that, Tina, made me laugh yeah, a lot. No, that's very good. Very uh, good boy. Yonakin, Yonakin asked, best meal pregame. I had Ooh. the same meal pregame the night before. I've spoken about this countless times, even on radio. Mum's pasta. She made the same what was Pasta. it specifically? Well, it was a bolognese-based one. Um, I do radio on ABC now, as you know, and Mum's even come on radio with Jacinta Parsons in the afternoon and has told the recipe. Really? Um, every game. Even when I moved out of home. Is it spaghetti or penne? Uh, no, do you mix it what's, up? What's oh, the, the spirals. Long, no, not the spirals. Sorry, the long tubular ones. Is that penne? Uh, or, yeah, well, or, they're the small. The, you yeah, can bit, get larger spirals. bit bigger tubular ones. Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, that was superb. It was brilliant. Mum would drop the casserole dish round the night before. So what happened in the state and all yeah, that? Yeah, disappointing. You, you just couldn't. You had I'd, to mentally yeah, figure out. Just deal with it. Eat the hotel food. This, you weren't a very good player in the state. <laughs> Oh, that's but good. Yeah, Mum's every cooking. Time. Mum's cooking. I I probably will get it once a year now. Mum will still drop a casserole dish that's around. It. No respect. And brings back so many good memories. <laughs> my kids don't get it. My wife doesn't get it. It is mine. <laughs> Do not touch it. I only get it once a year. You have a fish and chips. I'm, I'm having this. Yeah, I used to get it 20 plus times a year. Oh, that's good. Now just once. This is Ling. God love her. <laughs> Loved it. Uh, we better finish up, Scotty. Well, you, you're so busy. I'm oh. sure you've got things to do in this school. <laughs> I Cameron. better get back to work and get you, kick you out oh, of here. I always to loiter with oh. intent. Ruffians like you are hanging around St. Joey's. Um, great to have you back on here. As always, Scotty, we'll be back next week. Jack and Sam, as we mentioned, Sam playing VFL this week. Yeah. Hopefully back in the AFL team soon. Jack, no doubt, running around with the AFL. We'll be back to Eagles dissect Saturday the afternoon. West Coast Eagles. One forty-five. There'll be a 10 o'clock VFL game against the Under-18 Academy, followed by there'll be an Anzac ceremony, with it being the eve of Anzac Day. Um, there'll be a ceremony and then the game at one forty-five. For those who are getting along to watch the Cats play, enjoy the weekend, enjoy the game. Hopefully the news about Paddy Dangerfield isn't too bad. Fingers crossed there. We will be back again next week.